Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing something which I've been threatening to do for a couple of years now. Uh, on these Saturdays, where I'm probably not going to be around for all that much, I wanted to give you just kind of a quick, just kind of overview of everything that I like for the day, um, just across all sports, with the you know with the notion that you know things could change, lineups can change, things like that. And again, I, I can't go over things that I'm not playing, um, but. Here are my overall takes. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes on each sport. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a little late to the game with, with respect to soccer. Um, by the time you guys get this, it'll probably be too late, and this is my fault. But just so you guys know, just for the process, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to be highlighting um, you know, McBurney and McNeil as my top forwards. Um, but the, the real thing is Bruno Fernandez is probably going to be in almost all of my GPP lineups. Um, and then midfielders, Garner and Pereira, um, they're going to round out the midfield spots. I, I did a Saber Sim build. And what I did was, honestly, I went through all my takes and just X'd out like all the players I didn't like. So I have a very, very you know tight player pool. Um, and again, this is by the time this post is going to be too late anyway. Um, but again, just to get my process kind of going. I have to go through everything that I'm playing. Um the next thing is going to be the MLB slate. And the MLB slate is, it's a bear because it's throughout the course of the whole day and night. Um, so you do have to be prepared for um, for different lineup changes. But just to kind of show you what, you know, what looks good. And then what I'm actually playing, because it could be totally different, is, is pitchers wise, it's really three pitchers that dominate the DraftKings uh, projections, as far as I'm concerned. And that'd be Bradish, uh, Strider, and Verlander. Um, so, you know, if you are if you don't care about ownership, um, these are the three you're supposed to be using. You know, mix and match them however you want. Uh, Bradish does look like the lowest owned. Uh, and just uh, that's, where I'm, that's where I'm at as far as the projections go. Uh, Kershaw doesn't really show up. Dunning is probably a prolonger of PLR. He probably doesn't show up. So uh, these are really the only guys I'm getting to and over... I don't even know, you know, again, uh, I don't even have a, have a projection for over yet. I mean, so this, this is definitely very early, but I'm probably not going to end up getting to him in any case against Houston. Um, so with respect to the stacks, you know, again, what looks good and what you should actually play might be a little different, you know, because you have the Dodgers and Atlanta are showing up, whether you rate these on, on on value you know they're the top two values and also the top two raw points so if you just wanted to ask me what the best plays are overall you know what i mean it was something like bradish strider bradish verlander with dodgers and or atlanta okay but baseball just kind of doesn't work that way you know you have to look for you know somewhat lower owned stacks and somewhat lower owned plays especially on four game slates so just again what I did was I ran all this through SaberSim and I used the the contest simulator to come up with um with the lineups that would fit the type of contest that I was entering. And what I'm getting like right now, um in the uh whatchamacallit, in the uh in the lottery is is something quite quite different, as you as you might imagine, you know, um in the the lottery right now given the lineups I have right now and everything like that, uh, I'm getting Arizona as the top owned stack followed by Texas. So I'm really almost getting to very little Atlanta. I'm getting some Dodgers, but listen, it's obviously feels uncomfortable playing Arizona against Kershaw, but you know, baseball, you're supposed to be uncomfortable. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, and Texas against Bradish, which is pretty good with freaking leverage. You have kind of a good free swinging team in a good park against what's going to be a popular pitcher. I think this is pretty sharp actually. Um, pitching wise, uh, nothing really special there. Verlander, Bradish, Strider, as I mentioned before, and a little sprinkles of Suarez and, and Merrill Kelly. Still not getting to any Bailey Ober though. Um, uh, with respect to FanDuel, because again, I am playing FanDuel as well. Um, similar type of deal. You know, you, you'd want to play Strider with say Dodgers and Braves. Um, and you probably could do it. But again, you're, you're going to be being very chalky that way, or even if you play Bradish. So 
once again, what I did was I, I ran everything through the, the Saber Sim, uh, Contest Sims, and I made a couple of tweaks. And this is what I came up with. You know, I came up with, uh, with a much different kind of stack exposure. So for me, like, again, assuming all the lineups held, which they won't, but whatever, um, I'm getting, again, mostly Texas. Uh, and then Atlanta, I'm really not getting to any Dodgers at all. And that's just kind of the way it's, you know, that's kind of the way it is. So what, what you're seeing is that Texas is that kind of cool leverage stack that you probably want to play in GPPs across all, you know, across most, most slates, if you want to know the truth. So that's basically the deal with baseball, with the exception of, you know, remember the, the, the caution that lineups changing all day long and, and the, the last game isn't for another, you know, till 9 p.m. So uh, ideally you want to push everything back, which is kind of what I'm doing anyway. You have Arizona's, I have, I have Dodgers, some, um, I have a little bit too much Texas for that, but Hey, if the Texas things are working out, then I can, you know, screw around with the later lineups in, in, in a way to preserve my lead. And if the Texas stacks aren't working out then I can screw around with the later lineups in, in, you know, with the idea of being a little more gambling. Um, okay. Uh, in, in in chronological order, okay, the other thing I am going to be playing is the uh is the NASCAR. And and just to to um again, we don't even know what the qualifying is. We don't know what the um we don't know what the starting positions are yet. So it's you can't we can't even have projections yet. However, I do want to tell you what I'm going to do. Um or what I think you should do. This is like a road course race where, where it's very difficult to pass people. So if, if, if you get one of these top guys who for whatever reason doesn't qualify very well and ends up in the back, I would probably fade them. Um, it, it's uh, again, in a lot of, in a lot of kind of racing, you can make up those, those, those uh, the place differential really easily. But in these, this type of format, it's just really hard. So if you get somebody who looks like a really, really good place differential play, kind of inclined to fade them. And so what I'm going to do probably is once these projections, once everything comes out, I'm going to run my stuff through Sabres and whatever, and I'm going to make kind of a group where I want to have at least, at least two, maybe three, like coming out of the top 10 starting wise. Um, and, you know, just the idea is just hold the whole place line up like Yonkers, so to speak. I'll go into that more of that later. And just not a lot of passing. Um, uh, and just hope that the place differential plays just don't just don't come back and, and get me. So that's going to be that will be my approach to the, to the Xfinity slate. I just don't have any idea where people are starting yet. So I won't have any projections for a long time and I probably won't be back to update them. Um, and then, and then finally, um, MMA a little bit later, I just want to kind of give you a last, um, a last update on what I did. And MMA is, is such an amazing, it really is an amazing sport from a DFS perspective, because you start out the week with these ideas of what the great plays are. And then by the end, you want to get different so much that you end up playing fighters that you were otherwise fading. But the one thing you have to be aware of is this big line movement with Alexander Hernandez. So he was originally an underdog and priced as such. And in the last day, there's been incredible money coming in on Hernandez, pushing him to, you know, to favorite status. So you're getting him with who would probably have the bigger first round upside anyway, um, who is now getting line value. So two things are going to happen. Number one, he's going to look like a much better play on the metrics. Number two is going to be a lot more popular. So uh, uh, a couple of things I, I'll tell you that I'm doing. I am playing Hernandez, but I'm also playing a decent amount of Lins as leverage. Um, excuse me, Algio as leverage. And one thing I'm also doing, just, you know, I, I'm playing a couple of nerdy stacks. And nerdy stacks means uh, stacks with three man uh, of, of, three, of uh, three round fights, which is usually not something you want to do. But it's an eleven fight card, and I think there are a couple of fights that can deliver in that respect. The Hernandez fight being one of them, and the other one being the um, the uh, not the Munoz one, the other the other one, the uh, uh, the Lins Kutlaba fight, right? Um, 
So I am doing a couple, yeah, not not that many, but I'm doing it, you know, more than I would think. And then the other thing I'm doing is I'm using the Saber Sim kind of, uh, you know, the 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 not the Sim diversity thing, the um, the Geo Mean uh, filters to get myself a little different. Using some of the MMA uh, default settings, uh, default uh, what you call it, uh, rankings which gives you much more, much more different types of lineups to get a little different. And then I'm doing a bunch of lineups where I'm just leaving 2000 on the table. Um, just playing the guys I like um, just anything, you know, to try to get to that, that utopian mix of, of, of unique, but having a chance to win. And listen, if I knew exactly where that line, where the, where those two realities mixed, then I would have beaten DFS and, you know, then they, they wouldn't even be fun again. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing at MMA. Uh, the betting breakdown is up on the site. You can go ahead and kind of look at that. But if you want to see a real quick, actually, I'm not going to give you a quick summary of what I'm betting because if, for that, it's much more of a process of how I got to the picks than, than actually what they are. So I'm just going to, I'm actually making you go look for the YouTube video to go through that. And that's pretty much it. I'm not allowed to play CFB. Um, and that's going to be the uh, the the uh, the deal for DGen Saturday. No horses to do today, and we will see you guys Sunday morning for the uh, NFL breakdown, which will include uh, all the discussion of what happens with all the Detroit value. Seeing that um, at least I'm not saying Brown is out. As a matter of fact, it's possible Gibbs is out, and it's possible that Reynolds is out, which is going to just jam some of these lines receivers into the projection models. But we'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, I hope this was you know somewhat informative inf uh, informative um and again that'll do it good luck everybody